we are passionate about uh, the Python programming. In fact, PyLadies Tunes is a part of PyLadies global community. PyLadies also aims to provide a friendly support network for women and for everyone and a bridge to the larger Python world. Anyone with an interest in Python is encouraged to participate. Our mission is to promote, educate, and advance a diverse Python community through outreach, education, conferences, events, and social gatherings. Today, we are too honored to host Carla Jenkins. She will talk about how to build, train, and deploy a machine learning model tool on AWS. Our next session would be held on the 20th of November about the deployment of uh, machine learning models at Google and Vertex AI system. Please join our meetup group to stay tuned. Now I will let the floor to Hedia. Uh, hi everyone, thank you for joining our session. So uh, today we are very happy to uh, have with us uh, Carla Jenkins. So I will present our speaker, Carla, is a change and project management expert and a two-time Amazon best-selling author specialized in personal branding, project management, and positive change management. Carla is also the CEO of Phenomena Corporation, a project management cons consultancy that aims to help entrepreneurs and companies manifest positive change in their businesses. She helps people capitalize on all opportunities that positive change brings. She has earned her BA in international economics from Hiram College and MBA from Cleveland State University. Carla, has, uh, uh, Carla also has 10 years experience in corporate America, is a LinkedIn Pulse contributor and holds project management professional PMP, as well as certified Scrum Master licenses. Her business goal is to help solopreneurs, medium-sized businesses and corporations to increase their profits and productivity. Thank you, Carla, for accepting our invitation. So the screen is yours. Thank you. I'm very honored that um, Pilates Tunis has reached out to me. So for those who don't know, I'm actually in North America. I'm in the United States. So to have someone from Northern Africa reach out to me, I was completely honored. But that's what's so important about uh, being uh, that, here we go, about like machine learning and making sure that, you know, it's worldwide. And I'm very happy that you know it is worldwide so i'm doing the screen share so we can get started i think everyone is interested in learning you know it's like about aws and how sure uh, yeah so thank you just we have two question uh carla uh Ristara, she said uh, should the participants participants have an aws account Sure, yes. And also um, in this presentation is loading. Um, I uh, We're focusing only on machine learning services with Amazon Web Services. So we're not going to be doing the artificial intelligence. I know a lot of people um, who are in this audience, they know about poly, transcribe, translate, and all of that. But um, for this one, we're just focusing specifically on machine learning. Okay. And the question from Hossein, he said- It says practice. it's not responding. Come on. Let's see. Uh, Sarah, uh, Carla, we can't see your screen. Yeah, she said, I think. It says uh, not responding. I have to go in and come back out. Let's see. Yeah, no problem. No worries.
I need to re-enable share. Uh, so, Hedja, could you please uh, make her co-host? Carla, your co-host now. Yes, we can see your presentation. So, thank you once again. I'm back in. And we're going to start off with machine learning. So as I mentioned, how to build, train, and deploy models using AWS. So thank you for the introduction. But in addition, though, a little bit about me is I have 15 years IT cloud and project management experience. I'm also an Amazon Web Services community builder on the machine learning track. Um, also, a two-time certified Azure Artificial Intelligence Engineer. So uh, I'm multi-cloud with Amazon Web Services, Azure, and Oracle Cloud. And I'm also 100 Days of Cloud Mentor. So on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter, there's 100 Days of Cloud. It's a free challenge you can start today or whenever you feel comfortable of dedicating 100 days towards learning cloud. I actually started the challenge July 5th, 2020, and I'm still doing it over 400 days later. And that's because you learned so much about it and it really helped me strengthen my skill set. So returning back to certified Azure Artificial Intelligence Engineer in Microsoft Azure, you actually have two. You have the AI 900, which is Azure Artificial Intelligence Fundamental, and then you have the AI 102, which is Azure Artificial Intelligence Engineer. So first, we're going to start off with machine learning. And first, we're going to start off with some definitions. So I got these from Wikipedia. For machine learning, Wikipedia defines it as the study of computer algorithms that can improve automatically through experience and by use of data. It is seen as a part of artificial intelligence. So now, um, that the word is mentioned of artificial intelligence, we're going to continue with the definition of what artificial intelligence, which serves as like the umbrella of uh, machine learning and other things. Uh, artificial intelligence is intelligence dis demonstrated by machines as opposed to natural intelligence displayed by animals, including humans. So it's just taking the human and animal instinct and interactions and computerizing it and machine learning is the algorithms um, to help you improve the experience. We're also going to talk about in here the difference between supervised learning and uh, unsupervised learning. And we're also um, going to give you some algorithms be, um, for the um, AWS. So AWS has a machine learning specialty certification. So I wanted to use this also as an opportunity to weave in some of that just in case you're interested in um, pursuing that certification since you're talking about machine learning. And also, as I mentioned before, this presentation focuses only on machine learning. As I mentioned earlier, I know you have Amazon Poly, Translate, Transcribe, uh, you have the Deep Racer. Those are artificial intelligence. In this presentation, we're only going to talk about machine learning. So now we go into machine learning with AWS, and I'll provide um, links here. So I think I could be able to send them my slides so that you can have them. But machine learning has its own page. We're going to focus mainly on these uh, services. So SageMaker. SageMaker Ground Truth, SageMaker Neo, and Automated um, AI. AWS also has Machine Learning University, which is free, and you can do all types of um, experiments and run all types of uh, programs and algorithms there. You can also use Python. I bring this up because uh, the one thing about cloud is making sure that you know uh, and, and you stay within the budget because cloud budgets can go very high. What I like about Agile, um, AWS Machine Learning University is they give you sandboxes. And so when they give you sandboxes and labs, take full advantage of them because then you don't have to really um, use your um, 
your account is much. But I also like the fact that you're learning from the market leader in cloud. A, a final thing is also AWS has machine learning YouTube channel that you can fully take advantage of to learn at your own pace. So now we come to the uh, AWS machine learning services, give you some definitions and also bring out some stuff. So SageMaker is like the hallmark or the bedrock of AWS machine learning. And it helps data scientists and developers prepare, build, and train, and deploy high quality uh, machine learning models quickly by bringing together a broad set, um, set of capabilities and purpose built machine learning. So I mentioned that I was going to talk about, um, I was going to talk about, have you seen my screen? Yes. Okay. So I said I was going to, we were going to talk about, uh, machine learning and SageMaker. Okay. Yep. And that's really um, also going to connect to uh, the exam. So if you do decide to take the exam, Amazon SageMaker is very, very important. It's something that you need to know. What I will say is it's very user friendly and it even if you don't know how to program from scratch, it has a point click interface called SageMaker Studio. So I'm gonna do a little bit of the uh, overview. It has an integrated development environment, IDE, as I mentioned, SageMaker Studio. Why do you need an environment? So you can test and you can do development and you can do deployment and releases. You can do it and you can isolate things. So by isolating them, if you're running something different or you're running something in production and you test it, you don't want it interfering with that. Uh, you can also do a lot of functionality with it. And we're also gonna get into the SageMaker machine learning life cycle later in this presentation. Next up is machine is SageMaker is SageMaker um, ground truth. So ground truth is like your hypothesis and it's your way of saying, this is what I wanted to state. This is the information that I would um, need, what I'm testing and what I'm testing um, for it to be true. And you do that when you do experiments. Also, it's fully managed, data labeling. So um, data labels are like, I'll give you an example for temperature, cold, warm, hot. So you label them to know what you're doing. It's also a form of supervised learning. Uh, fully managed means Amazon handles that. So you have fully managed, which Amazon has, and Amazon is responsible for and then you have um, manage, which is like in between you and Amazon Web Services. And then you have stuff that you and your company manages. I wanted to break that down because that's part of the, the shared responsibility model. So whenever you see fully managed, that means Amazon Web Services takes care of all of that. And um, um, it's, so um, like when it comes to billing, or anything else, um, that's what it means. And I want to make sure that people know what that means. So with SageMaker, the around truth, I'm going to go delve deeper into that too. Also, I want to talk about the workflow. Uh, if you, you do Python and Jupyter, you have workflows also. Um, so it's AWS version of that. It also has automatic data labeling, uh, which uses machine learning model to label your data. As I mentioned, um, it has raw, it goes from ground truth to raw data, to labeling, to labelers, um, to assistive labeling, and then out. You can have people um, do labeling. For instance, um, if you're in cloud, you know about identity and access management, you know about being an administrator and you know about group policy and labeling to giving people privilege. And you, 
the goal is to give them the least amount of privilege to do their job and their job only. As it pertains to Amazon Sage Ground Truth, with labelers, you can assign people to do labels or to review. There's different roles available. And we're going to get into creating a role because that's one of the steps of how to build, train, um, and deploy a model. Next up is SageMaker Neo. And SageMaker Neo runs the uh, machine learning models. It enables developers to optimize machine learning models for inference on SageMaker in the cloud and supported devices at the edge. So the edge is where the end users are. Uh, you know, CloudFront is for the edge in Amazon Web Services. I'm gonna go deeper into what machine learning, machine learning inference is for AWS. And machine learning inference is the process of using a trained machine learning model to make predictions. After training a model for high accuracy, developers often spend a lot of time and effort tuning the model for high performance. For inference in the cloud, developers often turn to huge instances with lots of memory and pow powerful processing capabilities at higher cost. Well, what this does is it keeps the cost down and it speeds it up. One of the things I would say when they talk about high accuracy for your model is knowing when to stop training the model. So what happens is you get to a place or you get to a percentage well, you get to a high level accuracy. And if you continue to run the model, it will become overfitted. And then it would introduce some type of bias into your model. What NEO does is it makes sure it doesn't, it gets the high level of accuracy without the overfitting. And then finally, we have Amazon Augmented artificial intelligence. And this is the human review or supervised learning of machine learning predictions. And some sometimes you can do unsupervised learning, but sometimes you do need supervised learning, especially if you're going to do and train something that you're going to put out in production that's not just staying in the lab. Um, you may need human oversight to ensure the accuracy with sensitive data um, and to help provide continuous improvement. So uh, one of the things, I, I used to live in, in D.C., and they have AWS Government Cloud. They do have certain, you know, certain, not just capabilities, but certain rules and regulations you have to meet. So when something is sensitive, um, going back to um, SageMaker Ground Truth with the label, say something in Ground Truth is labeled as sensitive or confidential or very confidential, then it probably would have a human assigned to it to review it. And you would have, that's where Amazon augmented uh, AI would come in. So those are the four things that uh, parts of the services. Now we're gonna go into machine learning life cycles. We have a standard and then we have an AWS. So your standard, you know, this is an abbreviation because there can be more steps. But your standard life cycle is just build, train, and model, and then you can deploy. Well, AWS, when you use SageMaker, is prepare, build, train, and tune, and then deploy and manage. We're going to go into each step of that here with the life cycle. So for prepare, uh, you have the ground truth, which is like your hypothesis, what you're training, or what you want the potential outcome. Data Wrangler, which um, wrangles the data, because sometimes you can have issue uh, with data in its formatting or structure. If it's unstructured data, structured data, semi-unstructured, that's what Data Wrangler does. Then you have processing to process the data. Feature store, um, for instance, if you have specific features that you want to include and, and store them somewhere separately, and then clarify. Remember, it's data. Sometimes things can be unclear, and the Clarify tool helps you accomplish that. The next phase is to build. So you have Studio Notebooks, where if you are using Python, uh, you would have that there. 
of your built-in and your bring your own algorithms. AWS has built-in, which we will discuss. You can also bring your own algorithms and integrate them within AWS machine learning. In SageMaker, you have local mode, uh, which will save it on your computer so you can build natively on your own computer or natively within your own company. You don't have to do it remote. Something similar to like if you were doing Terraform, you have local and then you have remote. And those are two different places and two different repositories of where you can store data. The same here. You have autopilot if you want to do unsupervised learning. And then you have jumpstart. With train and tune, you have one click training, which is like automatic. Then you have your experiments. Once again, you have your sandboxes and places that you can do your own labs. Automatic tuning for unsupervised if you don't want to do manual check. Um, and then distributed training libraries. Once again, they don't have to be natively on your computer or within the building you're currently in. You can have it distributed to other places, other regions. You know, AWS has lots of regions, lots of availability zones, and that's what distributed training, you know, models uh, libraries are. Debugger, of course, if there's any code or anything that's hard to do or, or read. And then manage spot training. So manage means it's semi-managed, meaning AWS as well as you and yourself spot training. You could use spot instances to do AWS machine learning training in uh, AWS. So you have you know, your on-demand, you have your spot, you have your reserve instances, and then you have your dedicated instances if you are like a company and you have your own um, tenant in this individual. And, you know, you, if, say if you're one of these multinational companies and you make hundreds of millions of dollars, you can have like a dedicated line and dedicated. So I did want to point out the four different types of of instance types. So if you do do AWS, they're on demand, reserve, spot instance, and then dedicated. And then final uh, phase of the SageMaker lifecycle is deploy and manage. So you have one click deployment, Kubernetes and Kubeflow integration. So for anything that's like containerization, any type of cluster, you would have that here. Multi-model endpoints. Um, uh, AWS also accepts other cloud models. So as I mentioned, I was multi-cloud. And with AWS, it does have some type of integration with, I believe, Azure and maybe Google Cloud. So uh, what happens sometimes is if you're work, you work in AWS, you have a client that works in GCP, which is Google Cloud Platform. Then you have another person using Azure, and then you have different endpoints. And um, when you're doing endpoints, of course, you need endpoint management and safety, but you would have one company, you would go from, you have an AWS endpoint and then GCP on the other side, and then you would have another one with AWS and Azure. A model monitor to monitor if there's any drift because drift uh, can happen if you keep running it and say that there's a feature change and you didn't upload the feature change. That's what drift is. So model monitor would deal with model drift. Then you have edge manager, which manages the edge uh, locations in your devices, possibly through Cloud Plant. So for instance, if you have a cell phone or if you have a laptop, it manages that. And then, of course, you have pipelines, both machine learning, data, anything that you need for the model to send any type of data, any type of resource. So now um, I wanted to talk about some AWS machine learning algorithms. And this, if you are deciding to sit for the exam, these are some of the algorithms that you would need to know and may be on it, would be on the exam. So built-in algorithms, which are native to AWS, are is two categories, supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So for supervised learning, when you have a human being training it, XGBoost, FM, Linear, and KNN, or Neural Network. Well, unsupervised learning, 
K Meets Clustering, PCA, and Random Cut Forest. And then continuing, you have computer vision, which deals with image classification and object detection. So image classification is to classify, you know, whether or not it's, it's red or it's a stoplight or it's a human being or it's a car. That's what image uh, classification is to see um, what the image is. And then object detection is detecting um, what the object is. So when you when you go online and you see people say like I'm a human and then you have to click how many cars you see in those boxes, that's what object detection is. So that's an example of that. Um, and that uses computer vision. And then finally, uh, for text and neural, um, natural uh, language processing, you have LDA, neural topic model, sequence to sequence, and word to vec. Just in case you have like any text to word and word to text. So now we're getting into the final part, which are the steps of how to build, train, and deploy models using AWS. And so first I put off that you have to have an AWS account and log into SageMaker for this. The second thing is to create a notebook. You can do that in AWS or you can do that in Python. And to create a notebook instance in AWS, you gotta go into SageMaker. You have to create a notebook, you name your notebook, you select an IEM role, which is any S3 bucket option. And the reason why you select that is because you don't want it confined to a spe um, specific bucket. You want to be able that if you have to move it somewhere else or move the model or send it to another bucket, you'll be able to do it. And if you tie in a row only to a specific bucket, then you have to create another row and you don't want to do that, especially if you're the person you're only one doing it. Number three is create an S, S3 bucket. And there's two options to create a bucket. You can create it um, in AWS Management Console, or you can use a Python script or any type of scripting service. And then you can do load. Number four is load data into S3 bucket to separate into the train data section and the test data. Then you load your data into the S3 bucket. But number five is to build and train the model. You can use one of the models that I presented earlier. Um, for six is deployment. And for seven is prediction. And you use prediction to uh, see the model's accuracy. So that's my presentation for this. I want to know if anybody has any questions that you want me to answer. I think it's clear. We have a question. Oh, the good question. It says the use of S3 bucket is it free? Uh, yes, but what you start storing in there, it could cost you money. Also, for S3, in the beginning, when you create, you make a decision on whether or not you want to enable versioning. Um, what I do is I enable versioning because if you don't do that and you want to change the contents or upgrade it, then you'll have to create a new bucket. Any other questions? Yeah, okay, the next question is, can we train other models apart from built-in models? Yes, you can. Uh, as I mentioned on there, it was the computer vision models. Uh, you can also do text and natural language processing. So I'm going to go back here. Let's see where I put that at. Here we go. Yes, you can build the models using this. Now, the built these are the built-in algorithms, but on here you can do computer vision, you can do text and natural language processing. Great question. Uh, I have a question, uh, Carla, about sure. neural, uh, neural topic model. It's the first time I heard uh, about it. I know LDA, I know SIG to SIG, but I don't know about uh, neural topic model. Oh, yes. we There's a, a there's a lot of different models in there. That's what I also wanted to bring to you here, and that's why I mixed it in with some of the stuff that was on the exam because I wanted you to have a fuller understanding of like the 
the models and the algorithms that AWS learned. So any other questions? Uh, hi, Carla. I have a question about the notebooks. Sure. Well, the notebooks, you can either use um, AWS, which is native, or you can plug in Python. There's actually, let me see. Actually so it's a, a, only Jupyter notebooks, or you can like... Uh, use other notebooks like Alma oh you can Alma. use other notebooks you can use other oh. notebooks you do not have to use aws um you do not have to use aws matter of fact i'm going to drop this in the chat this is an aws SageMaker tutorial about how to build train and model and they use Python, so you do not have to use AWS native. Any other questions? Okay, for me, it is. It's for, yes, that's correct. Um, one question is for me: S3 bucket is not commuting. It's, it's not an instance. It's not an instance. Um, S3 is storage. The instance comes from EC2, or you can do Lambda, which is serverless. But those are two different things. But yes, S3 bucket is storing the data. This. Carla, uh, what's the difference uh, between uh, SIG to SIG and Word to Vic? Because I work with uh, natural language processing. Um, it's like for it's used for language processing, but it's about encoder and decoder. So, like, it's when you're speaking, when you speak to somebody, um, you encode, they decode it, and then they send it back. And Word to Vic is like using language where you take like words and you translate it. So like if you were to type something in and then you have like that Google thing and it, it speaks for you, that's the difference between the two. Okay, thank you, Carla. You're very welcome. Uh, Carla, uh, if you don't have like uh, lots of data, which uh, instance uh, EC2 instance, do you think is better? You know, it's like to sure, yeah, well, because the, the sometimes uh, it's really hard to choose, you know, which kind of uh, instance is more suitable, you know, for like your data and uh, what you want sure, to do. That's a very, very good topic. I would recommend ml.t2.medium or ml.t2.micro. If you use those, you don't incur a lot of costs. And the link I gave you for the um, example, the tutorial, it recommends you're using ml.t2.media. But the T2 ones are actually smaller instances that don't incur as much cost. That is very big in cloud computing. Uh, thank you very okay, much. I have a question said. Oh yes, you can you can um you can set up your S3 bucket and you uh, the the question in the comment is S3 is for storing the uploaded training sets and the outputted checkpoints during the training isn't something like Google it is like Google Drive actually it's you can just do it natively on your own computer you can just create where you want it to point or you can leave it in AWS. You can just you can create your own um, you can create your own like uh, folder link of where you want something to point to, or you can actually point it in the Google Drive if you want. That's a very good question. Or you can leave it in AWS. That's a very good question, though.
So since we don't have any questions, I would like to thank, you know, Pi Ladies for taking out the time to afford an opportunity for me to, to talk. It was very good. I'm very honored to be here. And I'll send, you know, something, I'll send you my uh, slides so that they could click on like the links so they can go directly to the stuff and learn more about it. Yeah, thank you very much, Carla, for accepting our invitation and to be here today. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone.